How's it going everybody? My name is Daniel from Hazardous Entertainment and welcome back to some more Minecraft Build the Earth Winston-Salem. Today's episode is going to be all about roads as you see right here. I've been working on uh, this little road outline here and I wanted to go over basically a, a somewhat of a tutorial uh, for how to do roads uh, and I figured we could focus today on that. So we're going to stick over in this quadrant once again because uh, again I have that project that is being worked on uh, off in the distance there. I'm kind of scared to look at it actually. I I'm, uh, can you see it from here? Y you'll be able to in a minute so let's let's turn the render distance down a bit just so we can safely look off in that direction and not see the project that's coming along over there. That'll be out uh, in a week or two. Let's not waste any more time and let's just jump into this episode. So what we're gonna start with is outlining the curb around the road uh, around this whole block here so as you can see i started up there but i haven't extended it down this way um, and we're just gonna do that now we're not gonna be decorating all of the sidewalk but we're gonna be decorating the sidewalk right here in front of the buildings that are already built like the uh, neeson tower as well as the mellow mushroom that's down here and we're gonna be adding in all those details i wanted to outside of the camino um, and just kind of fabricating up this place making it look uh, really nice so down here i've got my google maps and I'm going to be referring between that and this. Now, if you want a tutorial for how to work with the TPLL command, you can actually find that by clicking the card up at the top of the screen right now for our O'Hanlon building video. I go in depth on how to use Google Maps and Google Earth to be able to find uh, positional data for your buildings. Uh, we're not going to be getting too deep into that in this one, so there is that tutorial you can visit there. Uh, but right here on the front of the building, you can see I've already outlined with stone slabs. Uh, right in front of the O'Hanlon building and I'm gonna come in here real quick and I'm gonna actually double check my math on that because I think I did this a while ago and all you want to do when working in uh, Google Maps is you know when you're right clicking to find your coordinates I always click right on the edge uh, between the road and the sidewalk so right where the curb meets the road that's the positional data I give myself and then I will TPLL and I will oh no I can't uh I can't paste because I'm on a different computer. So I realized the major flaw with my plan is that I'm using two different computers to look at the map data and play the game. So I'll have to actually be referring to my uh, single computer here to be able to get the map data. So like I was saying, you click right there on the edge of the curb and the road and you just teleport. Now this one is showing me what I may have done on this one. Yeah, so with this one is showing me what I did is I went actually in. So whatever whatever block I was standing on, I went in. So I faced the direction that the curb was and I went in by one block. And I think that's gonna be how we're gonna be operating with all of this. So we can then, where do I stop over here on this edge? Yeah, so we're just gonna go through and do that around the entire building. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this coordinate. It looks like, yep, that one's right there. And we're going to come around to this coordinate here. And you don't have to do this for every single spot because we're going to be drawing lines in between. So that should be theoretically how that works. I'm going to cut that in right there because that straight line at this rise run is actually going to generate into a curve here. Yeah, so on these curves, I like to give more positional data than is necessarily needed. And so right there is going to be where our next piece goes. Right there for our next piece is going to lead us into. So that may be our curve, and I'm not exactly sure about it. But what we can do is head over here just a bit. So we're actually standing on this block, so we need to come here. And if we were to say, draw a line here to here. And let's take a look up at the sky. That Yeah, I think that looks like a pretty good curve. We may come in and change a bit of that, like we might jut in here rather than there. But I think overall, you kind of got to squint at it, look at it from different positions here but I think that's gonna that's gonna give us a good idea for what we're doing let's go ahead and get rid of this sidewalk texturing here so normally you'd be able to just run a straight line or a pseudo straight line all the way down there but we actually have another obstacle which is a jutted in curb yes yeah, so once we get that curb in we'll be able to do what we need to do going straight but let's go ahead and find that curb so it's actually here and we'll do that and I think from this block here we are safely able to run a straight line a little bit down. Uh, where are my slabs? Where did my slabs go? Oh no, I've lost my slabs. Let's see. All right, we're staying on this block. We'll jut in there. And I think if I was to take this, I was select that as my first position. I select that as my second position. And then I give it the line command. 
yeah, that's gonna be basically in line with how we're operating here. So let's go ahead and fill that in. I could do solid stone blocks um, uh, for slabs, but there are reasons I wanna start with an infrastructure of slab at first, uh, and you'll see why um, with the way that I do my sidewalks. So let's see, okay. So that's a relatively straight line right there. Now let me get into the map here, don't wanna spoil things. Okay, so looking within the map here, yeah, we can see that's a pretty good line. Now, how is that relative to the building? It's, that's, the only problem I have is that's pretty close. Now, technically that's probably accurate. It's probably three meters away from the building here. But the problem we're facing with this is it's really absurdly close to the, the building. There's literally no room for me to be able to build something in there. So what I might do is rather than stand here, you know, teleport here and place the block in front of us, I might have us place it right underneath where we teleport in. So I'm gonna go ahead and take care of some of that and I'll bring you back when I've repeated this whole process, but doing it in that method. So as you can see here, I went in and I used uh, magenta wool to emphasize this alternate exterior line. And I think we're probably gonna operate with this system because uh, I actually like having a bit more space to work with on the sidewalks. It, give us, give, oh, it gives us that really nice uh, three block gap here where I could actually, because there's trees, so I could put, you know, a bit of podzel here and, uh, and have a tree there and still have room on either side that you could walk around it feasibly. Now, as this goes on, it shouldn't be too hard uh, because you're just getting these straight lines, but we'll come back once I have done basically the entire thing. Remember, you're just TPLing right there on the edge and placing a block right below you. So that's how you can, you can mimic this operation. And uh, we're gonna do the entire thing and I'll be right back, so uh, yeah. Okay, so I've gotten all the positions set and I've been outlining this and I figured I could come back in here just to talk about what I'm doing. So I'm replacing uh, and connecting lines with this uh, smooth stone block, like this full, it's not a slab, it's a, uh, what's next, uh, right click is next. Um, and it's a, it's a smooth stone um, block that just fills up that whole space. Uh, eventually we'll replace it because we're going to be sloping this into slabs. Um, and so we're going to, okay, okay, that's, that's good, that's good. Okay, and I think, oops, other than uh, carving this whole thing out here, hold on. Okay, and I think that's the entire block done right there. And you can't see it all right now, uh, even in one fell swoop, it's so big. Uh, but yeah, I've gotten the entire thing outlined here, uh, according to the TPLL. And most of it was pretty easy until you come up here and we actually have those little uh, jut outs here where you can get some parallel parking going on on the side here. And everything should be right. We may end up adjusting this curb a bit, depending on when we add these parking lines in. Uh, but here you can actually see my original line was off because again, I, I was using that, you know, jut in by one, face the direction, plonk it down. And that's gonna give us more sidewalk space. So I think I'm just, I think overall, I'm just more satisfied with, with doing it like this. Uh, we may end up uh, figuring out something to do with the other side of the road here. Um, but I think, let's see. So let's just fill in our, uh, our sidewalk here with all of our blocks that we have. Let's get rid of that old road action here. And it took me actually a while to get this curve because it's more sharp on this side than it is here. And I kept thinking that was an error, but it's not. That's actually how uh, the block in real life looks. The, uh, the street block, not the Minecraft block. And that's about as simple as roads are. Um, and we'll get into some road lines now. Because again, roads, they're not hard. They're just kind of tedious. And if you don't have, unfortunately, if your uh, if your map area that you're designing doesn't have 3D Google Earth uh, data, it's gonna be much harder to get this information uh, accurately. You're gonna have to do a lot more of it by hand and by eyeball. So, and once we get the road filled in here, yeah, and that's and that's general enough. So now uh, you can see here that I at some point was doing the uh, the sidewalk here, like this crosswalk design in these street lines. Um, and as we've changed the street here, uh, this actually might be off. So I'm gonna actually go ahead and do the other side of the road really fast, just to see how that center line right there is gonna go. Cause I don't think I did that center line with the TPLL command. I think I did a lot of this by hand. Um, so that's probably why this is off. So let's actually see how this middle line and this road line differentiate from what I originally had. But yeah, you can already see this is coming along pretty nicely. Okay, so I went through and outlined uh, from top to bottom with the TPLL command. And as you can see, that orange line right there is actually where our curb uh, actually comes to. And right here, you can see this yellow wool line, which is where in real life that median line goes. So 
What that tells me is a lot of things. One, uh, doing it with the computer is a lot better than doing it by hand because I was basically off one block this way the entire time. But the good news is what it tells me is that my line data is basically accurate because uh, now we have enough space on equal side of the lanes here to have traffic going this way, traffic going that way, and there really shouldn't be much of a problem. So I'm going to clean that up really fast. And we're going to get into, well, before we clean that up, let's uh, TPLL this crosswalk here and see how that looks. Okay, so adding in, you can see what I've done to differentiate between the final, like the, the original ones and these newer ones I'm using wool. And you can see those wool lines that I've done. That's actually where the crosswalk is. So again, just slightly off. Eyeballing it is good to some degrees, but it's always better to get it truly accurate. So what I'm going to come in here and do is in between these white lines is just fill this up with red so that visually I can look at this and go, okay, all of that is where the crosswalk is because the crosswalk is this weird reddish brick, I think, and this color is, it's a perfect match for this color right here. What we're going to do is come here and we're going to get rid of all the white concrete so I make no more mistakes coming f in the future. And now what we're going to do is come here and replace this wool with white concrete. And that is our new official crosswalk right there. And as you can see here, it's actually going to jut in, I believe, a bit into the uh, the orange wool here. Uh, if the orange wool keeps going, it's going to end up like, let's see how, let's see how it's going to end up. Um, and so, yeah, so now we have our curve there and yeah, it looks like it's going to be, okay, so that, that lineup is going to, is going to be how that is. So let's go in here and let's get rid of all of this excess. Let's neaten this bad boy up here. Uh, cause we don't need any more of these old slabs. Might as well take this time while I'm building here to remind you guys to like and subscribe. Like this video, subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this series, you want to see more of it. I'm always putting out new videos once a week on Build the Earth. Uh, every now and then we're putting out big showcases of large buildings, but uh, for now, uh, we're doing some smaller structures because it takes a long time to do those large projects like the one that I'm currently keeping uh, out of your sight range right now. Uh, you can probably guess what it is. There's, there's a few buildings that are that way. So if you know the city's layout pretty well, you can you can do a good job of guessing what that's going to be. But uh, I won't say yet because that's going to come. And it's going to be a very big one. And I'm very excited to reveal that project. All right, let's replace this. Oh, we're not going to do a line. We're going to replace 35-1 with some 43-8. And that's going to be our new line there. And we're going to come in here because I like the concrete way better than the wool texture. We're going to come in here and we're going to do replace 35 4 with 251 4. And that's how you replace uh, yellow wool with yellow concrete. And uh, let's connect right here. Unless, oh no, we don't connect right here. We have because we have a line. So right here, there's actually a space between here. This is the line that is in intended to uh, prevent people. You know, it's, it's, it's where you stop your car when you come up to the crosswalk. It's where you they want you to stop your vehicle uh, when the light turns red, which eventually we'll be putting in stop light, stop signs. Probably not in this video, uh, but eventually you'll start seeing those littering the streets of uh, Build the Earth Winston-Salem. Uh, but we have to have that parallel line, so we're just going to run at the same rise run as the, uh, the crosswalk here. And yeah, that's pretty much what we had before. It, to be fair, it's what we had before, but it's actually accurate this time around. Um, so you basically employ all of those methods everywhere you go. Like, okay, so let's say there, there's, yeah, over here, there's this uh, line that I see on the ground and it's the dash line. So let's say I wanted to do the dash lines that run up and down this road. Okay, so let me TPLL. Let me down a concrete block there and let's TPLL to the bottom and let's select those two line of 251 and boom there you have it that is its placement on this road and yep you can see from where uh, and i may have to adjust this line no no i think i yeah i think i tpll this one so this one is actually accurate uh, it's not by hand uh, and you can see yeah they they make up nice uh equal segments on the road i might bring that one out a bit i don't know we'll, we'll have to play with that and i'll do a lot of that off camera uh, but I just want to get you guys in the, the understanding of how this is uh, operating, how we do things. Uh, let's do, let's move into, I don't want to spend too much time. I don't have too much more time to record today, but let's work on something I promised we would work on. Uh, so we got, we got our first thing checked off. We got the entire city block outlined. So now if I theoretically wanted to employ the same methods we're about to use across all of this, I could. Um, but we're going to start 
with right here in front of the Camino and in front of here, we're gonna decorate this block up as best we can. So what's out here? Uh, we've got some street view and I'll, I'm gonna show you guys some images of the street view here just so you can see what we're working with. And yeah, we've got ourselves some picnic tables and this is an old image, I think. But we're gonna start with these tree, uh, these tree boxes. So there's a tree in a box right here and I need to zoom in all right, trees and cars, bane of my existence. Right here is where the corner of our, our, our little tree pot is. So let's put a piece of podzel there. And I think it's gonna come out like that, like two. So there's the curb and then here's this. So run two, three, and I think we'll do, is that too small? Maybe, let's say we do it five. It doesn't come that far in front of the window though. It might even be smaller than I'm than I'm allotting it to be. I think it is. I think it's only one block gap like that. So theoretically that is what we're working with. Or I could even come up and do like that. Okay, and right here, I'm gonna put a log right here and say that's where a tree is. So if you ever don't wanna do the trees and build the earth yet, if you can just say, okay, well, I just wanna do buildings. I'm not great with, with trees and stuff like that. You could always leave like a little, a lot of people leave something like this and then they put uh, an oak leaf on top and they say, okay, that's where a tree will go. But we're going to put a tree in today because I want to show you guys one of the coolest features about Build the Earth Carolinas. So trees are very hard to do. It's very hard. People have a hard time terraforming things. It's, terraforming is just not easy. Building a building is easy. It's straight lines. It's, it's, it's easy. But building a tree like this, it's hard. So as you can see here, I've got a tree and that tree's a little short. In fact, let me, let me, let me, let me see how big that tree is. That tree is about six meters tall at its tallest point. So let's do a little warping. Let's warp to a little place I like to call trees. And this is exactly what it sounds like. It is a plot of a bunch of trees. And I have my own personal trees as well. These are the ones that are on the server, but I have my own personal ones. And you can just pick from any of these trees and just copy and paste them into your map. So what we're gonna do is look for a fun little tree. You got different types of trees. You got dead trees, you got large trees, you got huge trees, small trees. We're looking for something on the smaller end of the spectrum. And you, you could always feel free to take some of these dead tree designs and put your own foliage on it. This one's nice. It's tall enough. It's, is it, is this one, is this one dangly? This one's not dangly though, but we could always fix that. Okay, I think we're gonna, we're gonna adopt this guy right here. So what I'm gonna do is grab this. I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna do the up one command and I'm gonna purchase him. We're gonna get rid of those. And we'll be able to come right up here to what I'm gonna make new trunk. So I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna do copy. And we're going to go back to where we, oops, sorry, that's a double slash. We're gonna go back to where we were. And once we load in, we're gonna walk right up to our trunk here. We're gonna chop the whole thing down and we're gonna do slash slash paste minus A. Remember that's that paste minus air command. I forgot we gotta rotate it, hold on. <laughs> We're gonna have to rotate it negative 90. It's gonna be a little hard to tell how much you gotta rotate it when you uh, move like that. Okay, and our tree is now inside. And I think it's a good placeholder tree. I, I might I might end up changing this out for a different tree. Uh, it really needs like expanded branches out here more than anything, you know, it needs, it needs to be more full up in here. And you can always adjust the tree. There's no harm in adjusting the tree yourself. You can always do it. It's fair play to you. Yeah, you can always come in here. Maybe we'll do this a bit. You know, maybe we'll come in here and, and, and futz with the tree just a bit. Maybe that's better. Let's straighten out that trunk just a tad. And yeah, maybe something like that can work. Now, again, this is still just a placeholder tree. Uh, I have a lot more trees to pick from. Um, but once you find a tree that you really like, you can then copy and paste this all the way up and down. Um, and so that's where that tree is going to go. Now, let's put some fence iron bars around it. And that's going to act as our fence. And I don't know how well this is going to work. This shouldn't be too terrible of a job. It might be a bit bulky. Maybe. No, I think that that's that's pretty good for, for what it is. I like that a lot. Now, building takes a long time to build the earth, which is why I do a lot more showcases than I do live builds. Uh, so I'm going to take a break here. Uh, I'm going to come back when I have this whole block finished off, and I'll explain some of the, the, the things I did uh, going in and decorating up this whole block here. Um, and we'll have a finished uh, front block. So uh, I will see you guys in just a second. And here we are with the pretty much final product. Uh, so here we have the entire sidewalk 
section in front of this building done. Uh, essentially, oh, did I bump into the building behind me? I did, I did. Yeah, so it's not fully done uh, around the corner here. I've kind of stopped here, but as you can see, I've got a lot of detailing going on right in front of the Nissan Tower. And I'm going to talk about each of the little details. The first one you're probably going to notice is right here. I've gone in and added some uh, like pattern here with this brick. I felt like the uh, the terracotta here was just a bit too uh, mundane. This is kind of this brickwork uh, pattern here on the ground, but the br doing solid brick is way too, way too intense for, for what this looks like. So I just kind of thought about going with that. I'm, I'm going to sit on it for a while. Maybe I'll revert back. Maybe I'll find a different pattern I can go with. Uh, but yeah, I added that just for some extra detailing. I changed up the uh, the little potted area right here where this uh, this podzel is. Uh, it was just a bit too bulky with the uh, the iron bars that I had originally. And uh, this actually works out really nicely. It's already it's it's supposed to be like a black kind of plastic half wall thing, but th th this gets the job done. And and. I think it. I think it does its service there. This is supposed to be a bike rack. There's like two little uh, bike racks that that hang out here. So uh, this is the best interpretation that I could give it. It's just two open trap doors like that, uh, or not trap doors, gates. And then we have our picnic tables uh, at the at the front picnic area. There's these bushes and some picnic tables. And I believe currently there is actually a wooden wall that goes around like this. Um, and, and maybe kind of runs along here, but as you can see, I'm running out of space. So I've decided to omit it because it's, it hasn't always been there and I might, I could do, I guess I could do trap doors because it is a very thin wall. It's just a wall to keep traffic from, you know, walking into it. So I might, I might do that at some point, but I'd have to actually see it in person because I don't have it on Google Maps. Just a little sign, I think, that said something about like emergency tap. There's like a tap service thing over here. Um, for for fire services, oh, we've got these nice sconces on the front of the building, and these these beautiful, uh, what are these called? Lamp posts with some hanging baskets. I may find a way to be able to use levers in some sort of way. Maybe put the, put that into a block, like instead of a wall, make that a full block and have levers uh, pointing downward towards that. But for now, that that looks pretty good. I like. Uh, how it looks. I like it. It overall, it, it tells you exactly what it is. It, it, it looks nice. And uh, I think there's a few more around this city block that I'll be able to build. So I'll just be able to copy and paste that around the uh, the city. Uh, some more potted plants here again, just more player heads. And also I added this right here at the top of this uh, really nice detailed uh, front entrance here. It says uh, Neeson building. Uh, so I just put NB because typically if there is a big, tiny little lettering on something, I'll just put the acronym if I can fit it. So yeah, an NB, Neeson Building. Uh, and we got a little, uh, little bench right here that anyone can sit on if they want to. And I got a little sign that says, this building was built by me. But then again, this whole city was built by me. <laughs> and there's my copy and paste tree. I forgot, forgot to get rid of that. Yeah, I copy and pasted the tree. Again, I'm not too satisfied with this tree in the moment. Uh, we'll definitely go back. This is just a temp tree, but there are two trees here. More trees on the other side of the road when we get to that. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll, these will do for now. They tell you what's going on. Uh, and over here in front of Mel Mushroom, which we don't we don't have the interior done yet. We're going to eventually get to do a, a portion of the interior, not as far back into the building, but the, the front area here we'll be able to do. Uh, we got some outside uh, seats. Uh, very nice with some green pots that are in front of each uh, little building there. They love putting pots out next to the uh, next to uh, the eating areas out here. I noticed that. And also we got this nice parking sign and these little, I think they're just different random things. I think this, that one's a smoking, uh, you know, well, dispose of your cigarette place. And then this one is just a something, some city access point. Uh, but yeah, that's essentially the entire frontages. And with the interior of Camino done, this is really looking good. Like this right here is such a nice looking let's get the ooh, let's get the crosshair off of there that is such a nice looking uh you know area right there i would love i love it so much it's so great it just looks so detailed on the inside and also uh, i fixed up i added the additional um crosswalk over here and i finished up this line so you can see that is a pretty much let me get an aerial shot here for you guys that is pretty much a finished road that is what your finished road is going to look like. I might go in and put uh, trap doors, like iron trap doors, where uh, a manhole is, or I might add some roughing detail in there, but that is pretty much a finished road. If I looked at that, I'd say, yeah, okay, that's good. Uh, I think I need to put, actually, I need to do this, and this will be a good little educational experience. I put this, this is like to show where the loading zone is. This whole area up front is a loading zone for 
Uh, it's like a, I think it's some parking spaces, but it's parking for a lot of trucks that are unloading into this building. And it's got those dashed lines that go across it. And so the best way I've found that you can do that is literally just alternate. Is that going to be too much there? No, I think that'll be fine. I, I just alternate with it. Because what alternating is going to do is it's going to give us the idea that yes, yeah, it, it, it's not really like showing jagged lines, but it's showing that there is some alternating pattern there. And I think at our scale, it definitely looks good enough. But yeah, that is our entire little area done. Let's get a nice aerial clean shot. It looks so weird having that area finished and then the rest of this area just nothing but brick outlines. But all eventually the whole town is going to look like that. Look, you could come here. Imagine this. Imagine you're walking and then suddenly load in and oh, let's get rid of the let's get rid of the uh Let's get rid of the tree up there. You're walking around, build the earth, Winston-Salem, and this is what it looks like. Imagine that. It would be so nice. Everything on the other side, you see another sidewalk and other buildings. It would feel so good. And I, I've been places in build the earth that are fully done, but this is what it's going to become soon enough. Soon enough, we're going to have ourselves a nice interactive experience. And I want people who come here to have a reason to look around, to, to find like, you know, like a squirrel in the tree or something. Hell, let's put let's put one. Do we have a squirrel? Oh my god. It's squirrel heads. Oh, you got conquer. That's terrifying. Let's do a bird. Maybe we maybe we can do a bird. Yeah, look at him. <laughs> maybe 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 blend him into the tree a little bit more. So you kind of have to really look for him. He's he's in there. Oh yeah, he's he's in there. <laughs> but yeah, just fun things like that. That's what I want Build the Earth to be full of. Uh, another project well done. But I think that's going to do it for today. Remember, if you like this video, go ahead and give it a like and subscribe if you want to see more in this series. Uh, we have a big project coming, but I don't know exactly when it's going to come out. Remember, you can watch other videos in the Build the Earth Winston-Salem series. Uh, some of those links will be at the end of this video. Uh, but as always, my name is Daniel, and I will see you guys next time.